It's Platt, and today we head back to Belgium. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So the particular beer we have today is a Trappist Ale. It's a Belgian double. Comes from us from West Mall Brewing. Um, decided to kind of go back and try another uh, Belgian Trappist beer. Kind of compare and contrast with the Chimay that we tried uh, a couple weeks back. The double. A uh, little history on West Mall. West Mall Brewing is located at West Mall Abbey in Belgium. Uh, the Abbey itself was found in 1794, but however, was not elevated to the status of a true Trappist, Trappist monastery until 1836, which happened to be the year that they opened the brewery. Uh, the first particular beer they produced was low in alcohol and kind of sweet, never gained really any traction, nothing special for us to really remember. It wasn't until about 20 years in, in 1856, that they produced a strong brown beer, uh, first called a double, the first Belgian double, um, came out, and that beer obviously took off. The current iteration of the beer, or the recipe that's in this particular bottle, was developed in 1926, so this particular version of the beer has been around for about 100 years or so. Uh, the brewery itself ended up expanding in 1865, about a year after Chimay's expansion. So it was kind of a, a way to kind of keep up with the other uh, one of the other Trappist breweries. Uh, Westmall and Chimay are probably the two most well known of these Trappist breweries, and probably the two that you'll find their products the easiest at liquor stores. You know where you shop for uh, craft beer. Uh, a new brewery was built in 1933, and the year after, in 1934, West Mall came out with a new beer, a 9.5% strong pale ale that uh, first used the term triple. So West Mall gave us the first double and the first triple, and, uh, you know, those classic Belgian styles, and we thank them uh, for sure for that. Uh, today, most of the brewery's employees are not monks. Uh, however, today there are still 22 monks working at the brewery. Uh, we'll get, get into a little bit later why that's important, but uh, the monks are still part of the process at West Mall. Uh, they currently produce three beers, also known as the Holy Trinity, which makes sense. Uh, first is the double, 7% ABV. Next is the triple, the 9.5% ABV beer, where they use actually pale candy sugar in the, in the brewing process. That's something unique to Belgian beers, especially the Trappist-style ales. They will literally just add sugar uh, to add additional fermentables, bump up the body, bump up the ABV. Uh, unlike like some of the, uh, like an ice house, or uh, some of the malt liquors here in the U.S. or, or adjunct beers that will add either corn or rice or corn sugar uh, as additional fermentables. The Belgians will just cut to the chase and just add straight sugar. And the last beer from West Mall is West Mall Extra. It's a 5% patter spear uh, similar to Chimay's uh, Dory. It's a it's a lower alcohol beer that was originally just consumed on premise. Again, though, people started to like it, and so beer started getting out or getting distributed more. But a beer that was, again, originally designed for the monks at the Abbey and not really for anywhere else. Well, enough about this beer. Before we try it, let's check out the stats. Okay, so today I thought I'd get a little more into what is a Trappist beer, just a little bit of the history and what kind of makes these beers unique and how they're kind of regulated. Uh, the Catholic Trappist order uh, originated in Cistercern, hopefully I'm saying that right, uh, monastery in La Trappe, France, so now we know where we get the term Trappist from. Uh, currently there are 13 Trappist breweries on earth, five in Belgium, Two in the Netherlands, one each in Austria, Italy, England, Spain, and the United States. There's actually uh, a Trappist uh, brewery here in the U.S. At, uh, back in 2020, though, there was actually 14. We recently lost a Trappist brewery. Uh, Aschel, A-C-H-E-L, was dropped earlier this year from the status of Trappist brewery because they no longer had any monks working the brewery. 
Uh, from what I gather, they've transferred the brewing of their beers over to West Mall. Um, I presume proceeds are going back to that abbey, what have you. That's why I mentioned earlier about the monks that still work at West Mall. That is one of the requirements of a Trappist brewery. Uh, something called the International Trappist Association is what kind of runs herd over these breweries, regulates it, makes sure certain things are, are being done and certain requirements are being met to maintain the status of a Trappist brewery. Certain things like the beer has to be produced either in or around the abbey. Monks have to supervise it. Um, again, certain sourcing of certain things. Uh, uh, that proceeds are going back to the abbey and to their charitable functions. Uh, and that the the money is being also kept locally as far as local charities, not necessarily worldwide charities. Uh, again, just making sure that they follow those. There's plenty of breweries out there that produce Trappist style ales. Any brewery can produce a Trappist style ale. They just can't call it a true Trappist ale unless they're part of, unless the Trappist Association grants them that status. Um, it's a little different than like tequila and scotch. Those terms are regulated by international trade agreements, things like the EU and NAFTA. Um, and also, too, it's assigned to kind of a, a, a geographical restriction where, again, the Trappist Association is kind of outside the realm of government regulations. And uh, they control, again, there's Trappist uh, breweries in several different countries, so they control, you know, it's not just respect restricted to a geographic area. So it's a little different uh, there than, again, like I said, the terms tequila and scotch, bourbon, same thing, what have you. All right, well, enough about Trappist Ales. Let's give this one a try. All right, this is a nice dark brown. We've got Good finger plus of khaki head. Plenty of malt sweetness on the nose. Let's give her a taste. Oh, that is nice. Um, I'm getting a little more of the dark fruit than I did out of the Chimay. Um, even though... They're the same ABV. This one, I don't know, it has a little more pop, a little more uh, flavor. Uh, the finish is a little bit longer in the mouth, I notice. Yeah, to me, just a shade bit more complex. Again, more of that dark fruit note. Also, there's kind of that darker sweetness, you know, your plum kind of sweetness. It's not a straight, like a cane sugar sweetness. It's a little more complex. Um, also, too, I get just a, almost a little darker on the on the malt notes than, than Chimay. Yeah, overall, a real good beer. Um... I, boy, I, I never thought I'd say that, but I, I kind of like this double over Chimay's. Um, not a huge difference, just to me, a little more complex, a little more of that dark fruit notes. Uh, the dark malts kind of come out a little bit more than uh, in Chimay. Um, again, same ABV, still fairly similar beers, just this one kind of, Stands out a little bit more. Um, maybe this might be something I might do down the line. Just compare the triples, uh, compare the doubles. Maybe find if I can find the Patters beer. Maybe that one might be a unique comparison. And definitely, probably should maybe throw in some non-Trappist breweries that are doing a you know a Belgian double style beer. Maybe maybe that's something uh, might do in future videos. But overall. Really nice beer. Again, the these folks <laughs> originated the style, so they probably should have it down. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, 
please leave me in the comment section or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.